My name is Dr. Stanley Bird. I'm the Chief Diversity Officer at Episcopal Health Services. Today I want to speak to you about the term woke. Many people use this term today, but woke is not new. It has its roots extending back to the early mid 20th century. United States Black African Heritage Americans use this word to describe the importance of being alert to racial prejudice, social injustices, and discrimination. During that period, several songs written by black performers included the phrase, stay wake. It is a word that my parents and family members used when traveling from some southern states and cities to the north in the late 50s and 60s. We used it to describe the importance of being knowledgeable about where you were traveling, where you could stay, and even where you could go to the bathroom. Woke meant be alert, as if your life depended on it, because often it did. To be woke politically in the black and brown communities means that someone is informed, educated, and conscious of social injustice and inequality, and is actively working to challenge and dismantle systemic injustices. Simply because you belong to a historically marginalized group does not mean you are woke. To begin awakening, we must do our own work in regards to our values and moral compass. We must wake up to be woke. Many of us are still sleeping in the past, holding on to trauma, fear, distrust, and other outdated survival techniques that may no longer be useful in creating a productive and positive life. Woke has increasingly become connected to matters beyond race and gender to other marginalized identities and historically excluded groups. There are various political discussions and debates as well as criticisms of the term and the motive around being woke. In some discussions, it is used pejoratively, and that is expressing contempt or disapproval. Those arguments are too convoluted to be covered in today's discussion. So, what does woke mean? Woke includes the awareness of the current human conditions and atrocities. Examples include disrespect, incivility, and even murder. Woke is broader than being an ally to historically marginalized groups. Woke must include an element of compassion, respect, and empathy. Three of Episcopal Health Service's five core values. What divides the woke from the unwoke and the fake woke is often the tough question of what constitutes injustice. Still, experience suggests that the dividing line is more often about the appropriate response once injustice is spotted. Woke requires an observer's mind. That is the capacity and fascination with your own process. Being an observer of yourself requires that you become aware of very subtle emotions and impulses, feelings in your body, and behaviors. In the observer state, the individual can watch themselves and constantly figure out their emotions and behaviors. They think about what is in their control and what is not, and make an informative decision on what to do next. With the observer's mind, compassion, and empathy, you can generally begin your journey to woke. Some examples of woke moments are Black Lives Matter, because you believe it's important to highlight that black people continue to be mistreated in society. Women in power. A man who believes that more women in positions of power can help create a better society for everyone. Pride flags. A coffee shop that has a pride flag on it shows that LGBTQ people are welcome in their shop. Safe spaces. Companies with designated safe spaces for vulnerable populations where they can feel comfortable and discuss issues affecting them. And then there's gender-neutral bathrooms. Gender-neutral bathrooms so that people who are gender non-conforming can use the bathroom comfortably. Allyship is taking an active role in supporting and advocating for marginalized communities, using one's privilege and platform to amplify their voices. Pronoun badges is another way. Uh, a company that supports his employee to wear pronoun badges, he, him, they, them, she, her, in order to be inclusive of trans and other gender-neutral people. The Me Too movement. Women take a stand against poor behaviors of men in the workplace by sharing their stories of intimidation. Taking a knee by choice. A person who takes a knee during an anthem to protect against racial injustice. Acknowledging privilege. A person who acknowledges that they are in a position of privilege and therefore chooses to listen carefully to stories of those less privileged who don't have an amplified voice. I ask that you think about this. The key, however, to being woke is your response. 
What constructive actions are you or have you taken after these moments in time that have shaken you from your sleep? Are you using the values of compassion and empathy in your actions? Are you working towards a greater good for our organization and community? A quote by Eldred Cleaver from the 60s is still as poignant today as then. There's no more neutrality in the world. You either have to be part of the solution or you're going to be part of the problem. So with gratitude, I thank you for taking the time to listen.